two, one, we are live, everybody. This is 2OF Entertainment. back who knew yeah, back. Another, another week How you doing paul i'm doing well another week nice day again we're having yeah. a bit of a heat wave going on here but we're enjoying uh, it's better than the cold wave there yes. you go yeah so. we're just enjoying enjoying yeah we got a there you go yeah we have a great guest today we're gonna uh, talk a little bit about how um uh, art is being influenced a little bit by climate change and okay. how what artists what are artists doing on their own to make their statement and um you know there's different ways of looking at that subject and is it all serious or is it not is it's 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 you know how do we make an impact as a group if that's necessary and what do we do and we're going to talk with dave gordon uh from King kingston ontario and you know he's uh been a long time instructor of art at uh a, a number of colleges and uh i think it's it's just important to see how everybody's sort of looking at things differently. Like if we all did abstract, that's one thing. If we if we do realistic landscapes, that's another way of looking at things. But how do we how do we evoke um, an actual feeling in an audience uh, and try to get them to see what's going on around them? So I think we just you know maybe bring uh dave gordon in and we'll uh we'll just talk with him about it maybe he's got some answers uh, I'm, I'm looking for answers uh oh oh if david's got answers this is gonna be good not like our david no <laughs> <laughs> not our david david welcome to the show good good to be here yeah all right well, well i'm gonna disappear so you can give paul answers and uh yeah. i will come back at the end and ask my favorite questions enjoy your interview <laughs> Yeah, okay, just like good. Disney, just like Disney, he's going to disappear. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing today? I'm good. pretty good today. It's warm here too. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bit of that heat, bit of that heat wave going on across the country. Right. And uh, we, I mean, which kind of plays into what we're maybe talk a little bit about this. You know, uh, when I looked at your work, I thought, okay, well, it, it, it there's kind of a huge variety. Well, we'll talk about specifics of it, but the um, more birds fish animals types of things and how they're being impacted maybe and in relative to location and uh, are they out of context with their space and talk a little bit about walt whitman even uh, a little bit about one of your recent shows in uh last year i think in 23 and the impact that it may have had in some of the audiences that have seen your work i think it's um yeah, well, we'll just we'll just kind of just talk about that and your art journey i guess we'll just you know maybe just start there where 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 did it begin uh you know we we're talking a few years ago but uh, who have you been associated with and influenced by okay sure um uh, i'm originally from london ontario <laughs> and um i uh i grew up uh with there were there's a lot of attention um, on London uh, in the 60s. Um, yeah. Artists like uh, Jack Chambers and Greg Kernow. And uh, I, my first job was teaching at Beale Tech, um, which was well known in London as a, uh, it had a special art department. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so I also met uh, um, Patterson Ewan, who, uh, uh, had moved from Montreal and uh, and was in London. So um, the London was uh, well. Greg Kerno espoused um, regionalism and uh, wanted to to um, uh, or get his draw his art inspiration from the local. Um, yeah, these these area, these, right? guys, uh, these guys were some of the originators of Carfax as well. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're some of the very originators. They really saw a vision in what was going to be happening and what is going to be needed for artists. And uh, 
uh, London was a hub for that. You know, there was a lot of activity going on um, in that area in those times in the 60s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, I was right in the middle of that and uh, it was uh, it was great. So um, excuse me for my uh, lack of uh, clarity in my speaking. I've got uh, some uh, dental issues, so. <laughs> I was we, hoping we're, we're, we're doing well. We're still okay. Fighting. Okay. Yeah, so I, anyway, yeah. Yeah. We'll just yeah. Go. So yeah. So I uh, I had shows uh, in London, and uh, uh, I sold a piece to the National Gallery when I was about uh, twenty five or so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, anyway, um, so yeah, I got a couple of Canada Council grants, and then. Um, uh, when they ran out, I I got a job at St. Lawrence College in, in Kingston. So okay. uh, I moved down here. and uh, But I, I continued to kind of espouse the uh, the ideas of regionalism and, uh, um, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. I think I think most of us draw inspiration probably from our uh, regional settings, uh, what's around us, and what that because generally day to day that's what inspires a person. But I think you're you're also from from what I've read, some of the stuff that we're looking at, you've been influenced by you know different types of reading, like the works of Walt Whitman, and uh, you know, I mean that, some of that's pretty sophisticated writing and 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 uh, and concept in life in the time. Things have changed a little bit for the times, I guess, relative to Walt Whitman's time and vision on nature and different things, the way things were. Um, you know, I mean, it was the Walt Whitman, some of the early stages of uh, mobilization of people and vehicles. And, you know, we were just starting to spew out all kinds of stuff into the atmosphere. In some yeah, I, early I, I, years. I took a title for that show a year ago, uh, Specimen Days, which was... Uh, collection of his writing um, later at, when he was sort of after uh, the, the uh, Civil War, which he, he was involved in uh, uh, helping um, soldiers in the hospital. And uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So the specimen days uh, in his writing, he uh, suggested that um, the salvation of or uh, the uh um sorry i, I get it <laughs> well you know he he was there for the soldiers a lot right he was yeah 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 for but their, he for their, uh, health and things i think yeah, i want to get the and, and in uh, nature after everything else and so yeah. uh, the show was um uh, little paintings of of uh, uh, insects and birds and uh, fish, uh, other things. Yeah, and we'll we'll get to some of those because yeah. I think those are part of what we're going to show today, yeah. a little bit. So, one of our first images up here, the koi. You know, these these beautiful koi and uh, this this indigo background, like the, this this. There's kind of a a clarity and purity of of fish and water. Fish aren't healthy things. Things go south, pretty much. And so where, can you tell us a little bit about um, how these fish and wildlife influences you? And like, why do you paint these? Is it about color or is it about their environment or are they out of context with their environment? Or well, how do you see these? They were just part of the general uh, natural world, but uh, uh, I had painted uh, koi, um, quite for a long time because of their color and beauty and everything but i also when i was in london i had an exhibition entitled don't carp uh, that uh, <laughs> played on the word uh, on the the idea of uh, uh carp uh i had great mm -hmm. big cut out images of carp and uh watercolors of carp the fish but also the pun on the uh on the idea of uh complaining and and criticizing and carping about things so yeah. and i think it's one thing to complain but it's just i always kind of thought 
what is your solution to the problem? Tell, don't just complain, but can you can you offer advice in a solutional manner? So that was kind of a thing that my English teacher once taught me. He said, he says, you can complain, but you need to tell me why. And right. you can't just complain. You, you, you right. have to actually offer a solution to, if you can think of one. Um, is you, do you feel that some of your work can do that? Is it offering solutions? Uh, well, um, yeah, the um, I'm not sure how it offers solutions, but um, I guess there, there are answers. I mean, you're looking at it at, from your vision in your eyes to say we have a problem or we don't have a problem or we have, uh, you know, you, it's, it's a commentary. I think everybody has a storyline. There's a lyrical aspect to a body of work usually, which usually has a, like you said, specimens, it has a title that wraps it and, and holds it together. And people go to a show to see your view on what's happening uh, in your eyes, right? Is, is Am I correct? Is that? What yeah, uh, coming back to like climate change, uh, I, I treated, um, treated that topic in, in a sort of a lighthearted manner. Um, I, I did a painting with uh, uh, a rubber chicken cloud floating over the landscape and uh, other things, water spouts like uh, shape in the shape of chickens and, and things like that. Um, uh, but uh, at the same time, um, realizing that it's a, it's a, a big problem, right? And uh, Walt Whitman's day, nature was more, was less uh, polluted and uh, the, the idea of man's uh, impact on nature wasn't I mean even even it was huge then in, in, in terms of what happens in the Civil War and all that but um, yeah the destruction yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Re but the regional destruction during the Civil War in the states was you know they had I remember seeing a, a photo, of a of a, a tree florist area that was a battlefield there wasn't one tree left in that forest that's how much lead was flying through the air it, it, it decimated every tree like every right. sapling every tree was gone that's how much lead was flying and you kind of look so so you know, man's impact on the environment on the natural environment has always been pretty dr drastic and, and huge right. so yeah so that's what i so with these, this this painting is a painting of a exotic uh, cockatoo, uh, sort of loose in an Ontario woods, and uh, I I took I took uh, the idea of dis displacing um, uh, tropical birds and sticking them in the uh, the Ontario landscape. Uh, yeah, I yeah. Think, I think an idea of you know things out of whack a little bit. Yeah, and as a as a concept, that's one thing. But it's in reality, some birds do get loose. You know, some of those, you know. Oh yeah, they do. They the sure pet, the they, they do. Uh, yeah. The budgies and the different things. <laughs> all of a sudden, they 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 do get loose yeah. and <clears throat> and disorientated, and uh, they get put into the environment. But you know, down to people flushing fish down toilets, and all of a sudden, those fish are now in the in the water system. Yeah. Invasive well. species and all that. Yeah, yeah, the invasive species is right. So we we've not been very good at uh, managing uh, fish in our habitats uh, or or birds or animals. Generally, they're out of context with their location. Right. Uh, for sure. Yeah. I, I think I have a an impulse to do um, just straight uh, paintings from nature, like. Uh, a group of seven or uh, just you know pretty landscape type things and I, I always sort of have a, also an urge to put some twist into it to make mm -hmm. it different yeah uh, so that's why there's another painting of a of a um, macaw in a, in a snowy landscape uh, with uh, perched mm -hmm. in a tree yeah. which is not normal for those kinds of uh, exotic birds so yeah. Uh, so, so do, you, do you find when you do this that your work is maybe turning a little surreal, like surrealistic in style and 
Like, yeah, yeah, definitely. It's like, so does that does that kind of when you things are out of context, like surreal painting, a lot of like, um, they they it tends to grab your attention sometimes, right? Because you've taken symbolisms hmm. and put them together in in a in a manner that uh, is 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 a different kind of. It's, a lot of times it's an agitative con conversation. Um, you know, Dali, for instance, would do that. You know, whether you, you know, things that a twisted landscape with melted clock, for lack for lack of imagery to talk about, or beautiful women, he'd have them as well. But yeah. I think, I think it's kind of like so. I see that a little bit. See, it's nice to see this bird in this landscape, but yet for sure you're saying, well, this is not a tropical landscape. You 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 know right away that it's not. Right. You're saying it is an Ontario landscape, and so that's. So that gives you that bird out of context, the kind of bird that it is, right? But we can go through some of these other things here. This is kind of like what I'm talking about, a little bit more surreal. Like there's this. Yeah, uh, definitely. They could be depth charges or uh, like bombs. <laughs> uh, yeah. Just taking that image. I I, always, I have admired the work of Philip Guston, the um, American abstract artist who later in his 60s or maybe even before that, did a complete reversal and painted cartoony type uh, uh, works. Um, and uh, he's always been one of my uh, yeah. heroes. So, yeah. <clears throat> Just well, I think that, yeah. Style. I think, yeah. Sorry. I think that's important that we find that the ones that have um, – a voice that that resonates with you, like it doesn't mean copy them or anything, but it's saying there's somebody else that is also speaking. And when you put two people speaking or four or ten about the subject, then it gets strength um, and it also gets credence. So people start um, understanding with that there's more than just a one-off person talking about something that's important uh, it, it visually as well as uh, there's an impact when you can do it visually. But you're being influenced as well by writing and politics and some of the things that are happening daily, I guess, um, and, and trying to respond to those things as well. Am I correct? That's yeah, correct. Yeah, I don't know if you've got my the, the uh, Moby Dick painting. Um, I think he's over, coming up. Yeah, he's okay, over the over the Toronto skyline. But that's another case of sort of taking a classic literature and uh, and using it. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well. Yeah, we always have to find some kind of base, and I think a lot of uh, a lot of artists they use writing and music as a base uh, for some of their works. I mean, they're influenced. You can't say that an artist is not influenced by music when they put it as a background in when they're painting or something like that. Yeah. I think either it's calming or it's agitative or bouncy or not bouncy as far as that. Maybe that's as much as it gets. But yeah, this I can see this now. The 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 idea of the blue sky could be the water and the, the depth charges and <laughs> well, yeah, there's brown no. bales, you know, and uh, maybe they're made by Quaker oats, you know. Remember the cereal that used to be uh, <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I also want to mention um, the the Canadian artist uh, Kim Dorland. You know his his work. Mm -hmm. uh, he, uh, yeah, he he also is. Uh, refers to I uh, does paintings of burning forests and uh, yeah he did, uh, he did group of seven kind of uh, pastiches too for, for a while anyway I like it I like him a lot too yeah well the group of seven is used quite a bit as a, a sounding board you know to think we go back yeah. to thinking like that and then I always have said it's really hard to go into Ontario North country and not paint in the fall. Yeah like a group of seven because it's just you know you you, you know you're, you're looking at a very vibrant uh forest yeah for sure i i love tom thompson and the group when yeah you know, when I was a, lot people, a lot of people do they yeah. they were they were uh very grounded in in what their search was for as far as what was canada uh right. you know right. visually i mean it did it wasn't. I think some of them they they did traverse across the country into across the prairies. Pretty much so, yeah. Well, wow. so yeah. they and they actually the north, they yeah. got in, into the north country, but uh, mostly into central Canada. They uh, they explored that, which is still you know it's still it was still quite a feat in the day to move around, 
Um, I mean, if it wasn't for Lauren Harris and his his access to a box car, you know, and and a, and, a, and a go up a rail spur somewhere and paint right. in October. So it's you know, you need to have uh, opportunities and and uh, enact on them. And here's one of your so you love parrots. I see the parrots are just one of the. <laughs> Yeah. The, the recurring thing in your work. <laughs> what is yeah, it? Yeah, I, I don't Color have a the, there's a personality. <laughs> I no, yeah. They they um, always have that kind of smiley look on their face a little bit. Uh, yeah, the, yeah. I did a number of little paintings there, like six inches by six inches por portrait of parrot heads, and uh, then I switched and did uh, uh, some insects like scarabs and beetles and things like that pick them just for their the uh the color i guess and uh yeah. the simple uh so, so they more they just they were just more portraits or they just are they like pieces that you're working towards another major piece of work where these are kind of well uh, they were they were part of the um the specimen day uh exhibition i had a, a whole wall of little little portraits so. okay yeah. So how was how was that show received? Ah, uh, it was good. I yeah. I, um, that was at and, the window gallery, right? Yeah, yeah. At, at the Kingston School of Art, which was founded by myself and a, and other people from the St. Lawrence College uh, Art Department when it folded in the, the mid nineties. Um, we we got together and. Uh, but it's taken off. It's uh, independent, and uh, yeah, I've uh, I've shown um, at the the Modern Fuel Gallery in Kingston too, which is uh, um, artist-run center. And but the Window Gallery is a place where you can you can sort of rent the gallery and and put on a show, no. which is what I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no. I think those are great to have those opportunities uh, regionally for artists to have, because a lot of times there's just not enough places to show. Uh, galleries are generally, um, they have their roster already and you have to be quite prolific to get, bump somebody out basically to get in. Yeah, that's one of the thing, the ideas behind your uh, artists in Canada, right? Uh, exposure of- It, for a lot it of, is, yeah. 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 As it's best we great. can. Yeah. Yeah. And a different kind of reach than just a regional reach as well. So we get right. a little right. bit more a fuller reach. But this, uh, so where? Okay, so this was one. Is this a six by six kind of a? Yeah, painting? just a little little oh. small painting. Yeah, yeah. And I did a bunch of uh, parrots, and uh, I, as I said, I did some colorful beetles. This is a larger painting. This is like three feet by four feet, I think. Yeah. Another of that. You know, a, a Canadian landscape with a with a, um, a foreign element inserted into it. A flipper, uh, a flipper, flipper there. yeah, flipper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that uh, the jumping dolphin is uh, it's what? used in a common image, right? It's used in some kind of shampoo, I think, or so. Well, like, yeah, it's, it could be very well. Yes, you're right. Yeah. It probably is. Kind yeah. Of shampoo. So, yeah. Well, the, the the dolphin would be around for a little while, but I think as soon as the ice would move in, that dolphin would start heading. Yeah, south. he wouldn't. He wouldn't be he'd very happy. Quick. Also, yeah. he's a saltwater fish, so he would have trouble <laughs> surviving in a in a freshwater lake. But well, that's um, true. I mean, yeah. they do. They do. We do have them in a lot of aquariums. Uh, yeah, and and things. So uh, the, the whole thing is absurd, I guess. So it's like surreal. <laughs> It is, yeah, it is surreal. I mean, I mean, you're not you're not in a Florida game, Everglades yeah. or anywhere or somewhere, but I think, but it does, you know, conjure up that thing. We do have captivation of animals for our own purpose, our zoos and our our water zoos and our land zoos. You know, yeah, of exotic animals that are in a captive situation, and um, I mean, it's that, nice to be able to go the fish. <laughs> yeah. Well, they do it. You know, we've got porpoises and killer whales and yeah. different things as well that are in a captive situation. Um, and it's one thing, I guess, if they were injured and you're taking care of them and they could never survive anyway. But a lot of times they've been captured and and contained in a space for our own entertainment. So a whole different, a whole other way of looking at 
the treatment right. of right. wildlife, right? We again, they're in a location that they hadn't intended to be. <laughs> yeah, and we've we've moved them to that location for our own purpose, which is sort of what nature's happened. We manipulated it to our purpose, what we think is beautiful. Yet it was already beautiful in day one. Right. Uh, right. I think there was a posting the other day about Chernobyl. And they have now found that there is a fungi that is growing on some of that radioactive uh, material uh, mm -hmm. and grow soil. So nature does adjust to it, but it's a diff just a different kind of nature. You wouldn't want to eat that fungi that, no. that's consuming the. But nature always adjusts to something, but um, not in the sense that uh, in its purity that we see it. Right. It, yeah, you know, you're dealing with a lot of other things. It's a hawk, right? Am I correct? Yeah, the hawk. Yeah, yeah. Hawk. I, another one of the uh, uh, animal, bird, fish uh, paintings that were part of that exhibition. Uh, right. um, I also uh, had finished reading a book called H is for Hawk by uh, I forget the woman. Wonderful book. Um, highly recommend it. <laughs> yeah. Well, for a lot of bird lovers and, you know, people understanding what different birds, they are impacted here in the, in the, co in the, yeah. the prairies quite a bit um, due to a lot of the poisoning of rodents and animals like gophers and things that are around. And these birds live on those. Uh, yeah. A little, a little bit of roadkill as well. Whatever happens to be around they. uh, they're, they're trying to survive like everyone else. Yeah, I was attracted to uh, predatory birds like peregrine falcons, and and uh, this is a goshawk. It's uh, yeah, a big big. Uh... <laughs> yeah. yeah, we had we have a we have a bird feeder <laughs> in our in our yard in the winter, and uh, mostly little sparrows. And there was a one way one day my wife looked out the kitchen window, and there's a hawk with a sparrow down on the ground, and oh yeah. <laughs> I made a comment on social media and so she said, well, it is a bird feeder. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so he spotted that there was a good opportunity. So they are, in the, well, they are in the cities a lot. For and, sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we, we see them um, uh, every day in our yards now. And uh, I actually, I saw a fox walking through our neighborhood here two weeks ago, just trotting through a, a breezeway and going, I don't know where he was going, but he knew where he was going, a fox. So right. we get coyotes and fox that are, again, impacted by, um, our, I guess, our growth. We've moved into their areas, and uh, and also their their growth has expanded as well. I've done a few shows on stuff like that myself, just uh, some installation pieces and talking about oh. the environment. So I like this conversation because it's it's sort of it, it relates to some of the things I do uh, personally and and believe in. Um, do you think it's important for artists to have a belief in something uh, when they in, in put into their work more so than a pretty picture? Well, I, yeah, I think so. For me, anyway, um, uh, it's, uh, it's more than just decoration or um, yeah. it should be. Um, so. I, I guess I, I always felt that there was some longevity in a piece if you could go back to it and it actually had some kind of impact statement, even if it's a little subtle somewhere in there and that over a body of work uh, for a show, you could say there was a underlying theme that was strengthened by uh, good visual choice mm -hmm. uh, in, in what you're doing. Even abstract works can be that way. I mean, to have a show that can have a bit of impact. Uh, I think it also maybe helps separate you from everybody else that it may be doing similar things yeah uh i think you know a lot, as far as terms of in terms of selling work uh um i think there's different motivations for, for people to buy art a lot of people just want something nice to, yeah uh, pretty well, some art some art scares people yeah and, and scares corporations and, right. and businesses right. won't they want a certain kind of look, color, shape, whatever in their office or in their uh, home. And you yeah. 
they, that's their right. It's, they can have whatever they like and they can choose what they like. You shouldn't tell them what they shouldn't have and shouldn't. But um, anyway, I think that was just one of my own personal mantras. I kind of, I, I, I like to see work that takes a bit of chance. And I like to, I like to go in an office where it has a little bit of bite, you know, and said, rather than just saying, oh, there's a nice little bouquet of flowers on the wall. You say, right. well, give me some flowers with some punch, you know, uh, <laughs> tell me, you know, I don't know, go into the dentist's office and there's usually just a print on a wall or something. But. Yeah. I guess if you're in the dentist's office, you don't want to be upset by, <laughs> by some, the, real pain, <laughs> some real painful painting. Yeah. 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 Like a Liechtenstein that says pow and ow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you would not want to see that one. So there's another chicken weather painting uh, I imposed. Uh, uh, well, I, I had a book uh, on weather images and um, mm -hmm. I, I just. Did you like tornadoes? Tornadoes that are happening? Yeah, water spouts. Yeah, tor yeah water spouts. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They're, and you definitely tornadoes over the ocean, I guess. Where, where the, right. Well, they can come across Lake Ontario too. Uh, yeah. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. We're getting more of them up in Kingston Way. Tornadoes. There was one. Yeah, I think. Yeah, we've had a few in the prairies as well. They're coming. Oh. They're <clears throat> they never used to be as prevalent, but they're more and more all the time. I think with the uh, the warm and cold fronts are moving uh, dramatically, and one day you can have 15, 20 degree differences between your day. Uh, you know. Down yeah. to getting hail, like even more, like thirty or forty degrees in the day, and the next day you're getting a hailstorm. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty crazy. very dramatic. Yeah, but, well, I think these are these are a kind of responses that uh, like conjure up conversations. Like if you don't, if you have work that's just bland and nobody wants to ask a question, or it doesn't, it doesn't have to do too much. But if it Triggers a little, oh, I, I can relate to that. I've seen that before. Or even yeah. down talking to the person next to them when they're looking at your work, I think you've done your job, right? I think. Right. You agree? You sort of agree that you that's kind yeah, of. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. And also, uh, you know, just looking at the sky, you can uh, often see things up there that, uh, well, like my, my uh, shreddies clouds. <laughs> Uh, clouds for instance yeah you can see images uh, okay. <clears throat> back to these lovely koi mm -hmm. yeah. well there's uh so these fish are, are are they do you go to a pond that where they're in or are they from photos or no they're from photos oh. i collect photos uh yeah just uh yeah I don't want to be sued by Getty Corporation for stealing their. <laughs> well, their you can images. you can buy the rights to use an image uh, on a royalty-free situation somewhere. If, I have if they don't know you, they won't sue you. I guess. Yeah. I know. <laughs> That's what um, I'm counting on. <laughs> well, I know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I think I, I started off by photographing koi in the Montreal Botanical Garden. Um, beautiful. And I did this whole series of watercolors of, of koi from my own images, which uh, uh, I finally exhausted all the photos that I had of it. And yeah. So I I <clears throat> would use my own images, but um, lately yeah. I've just taken stuff from the internet. Well, I think I think yeah, like you said, there's copyright issues, and a lot of times, I mean. I'm an advocate of Carfac and, and believing in that. And with AI coming in now, um, you know, you're trying, you're, you're using verbal commands to generate images. And that image, those images are pulled from a massive database of content. Right. right. And you don't really know where they're coming from. Uh, you can make a two headed fish with just a comment. You could say, make me a two headed fish that looks like a koi. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, actually, if it's a painting, it's it's different too. You know, like it 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 doesn't look. It's not like a copy, exact copy of the image. I know yeah. the courts are always sort of finding in favor of the uh, the photographer or whatever. But, yeah, uh, yeah. It's artists just, generally just take what they want <laughs> and use it. So, well, if you manipulate it quite a bit, I mean, you're you're actually you know 
you're painting images and and they, and they're not exactly copied like right. you know, you've right. actually redrawn them in in a way but you've maybe used a, a color pattern that was what you like and i think i think that's yeah that's fine so the impact of colors how does that work with your work like these ones weren't turned they're oranges and yellows or the greenish background uh, you know in, in one were that was that a response that you were looking for was it yeah i mean i, I always uh, am attracted to uh color and, and uh, colorful images so um yeah yeah. So koi are a natural the subject because they're so. Uh, yeah, I've seen some beautiful paintings of koi, and they are they are uh, an abstraction in themselves. Like they're beautiful, right. right? Especially when they're all feeding and they're all stacked together, like it's you can hardly pick them apart. Like they're just right. yeah, look like a really bad jigsaw puzzle. Like just, <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't want to. Yeah, I've seen actually these, seen these pictures. paintings aren't really photo real anyway. They're they're more. And I kind of like, that. yeah, I, I like the fact that it is they're hand drawn and they're they're actually response drawings. Yeah. Um, and I actually like people that you know works that people draw from memory. Um, what does a fish look like? Right. Right. <laughs> and uh, kids are great advocates of that. I mean, they kids, what is a fish? And they draw their favorite fish, right? And yeah, they just draw yeah. from their head, and it looks like a fish. You know, they they've got it, they got it down. So. They can tell you whether it's a shark or a whatever, but right. So this, this is, is Walt, a, Walt, Walt Whitman's Whitman. head. <laughs> yeah, a floating yeah. head. Um, can, you, can you tell us a little bit about yeah and how this how this affected this piece of work um, at uh, Bon Echo, which is like north of Kingston um, on Lake Mazana. Um, there's a big rock, a huge rock up there and um when i was at saint lawrence i met a woman who had uh been a secretary to someone who had ran a had a lodge at bon echo and uh had a um walt whitman appreciation society up there and in, the, in the, probably in the 30s and 40s or maybe maybe even later than that and she had commissioned um scottish stone carvers to carve a quotation from walt whitman's leaves of grass on the rock yeah and it's still up there so um there is a like a a real connection with uh walt whitman's work and and bon echo um so uh this this isn't the painting of the rock. The rock is like through the trees and on the other side, probably like in the in the distance there. But I, I decided to. The painting is called "The Spirit of Walt Whitman at Bon Echo." There's a there's a, a continuing story that uh, Walt Whitman never went there, but his uh, biographer, a man named Horace Traubel, had gone up there, and uh, actually had passed away when he was up visiting th this uh, lodge at bon echo and uh apparently before he died he said he had a vision of walt whitman's head coming over the rock at, at bon echo <laughs> so there's uh, you know there's a lot of a lot of backstory that people wouldn't understand just looking at that painting but um yeah yeah i actually have walt whitman's book leaves of grass but i think i fell asleep about halfway through it well, yeah, it's a long, it's a yeah, it's, long. Yeah, it's a, it's a big one. And yeah. It's, uh, yeah. And I put it back. It's on my shelf. I'm looking at it right now. But it's, <laughs> yeah. I should pick it back up. And yeah, I think well, there's a bookmark in there where I left off like years yeah. ago and should pick up where I left right, off. Right. But it, it, it's dry, but it has, it's full of content. And it's just, you know, it's a vision and a way of writing. Yeah, it. he's regarded oh. as a, one yeah. of the great poets of the U.S. Yeah, yeah. he was. Yeah. Um, yeah. Good. So, so this there. is a parrot. This is a parrot that's in the winter. Yeah. <laughs> Not looking well, too happy. And <laughs> yeah, a little. Well, he still has a smile on his face, but he's, there is a bit of wonderment. But right. The yeah. So, I think the tree probably has as much to say as the bird in this one for some reason. Yeah. So, uh, there's a. Um, an extended arm to come sit on my arm for a while and think about your day. <laughs> right. 
You are out of context. Um, he is blue already, though. Cold blue. You, you yeah. talked about painting from imagination, but I, I find that uh, di very difficult. I always work from uh, from either photos that I've taken or, or stuff that I've found. So. Yeah. Uh, well, I found that once you draw a tree or two, you can probably draw a tree again. Right? Yeah. yeah. You understand <laughs> certain types of trees look a certain way. Um, it's just the way I look at some yeah. things, but it's kind of nice to see a response from your mind as to how you mm -hmm. draw. For uh, sure. But a lot of people want, they want the specifics of a tree and the detail and um, that's the way they draw. I mean, AJ Casson did not draw every little leaf on a tree. No. But you knew the beauty that he could conjure up with the color that it generated. Uh, Casson scenes are, they're iconic. They're just iconic imagery of yeah. our northern country. And well, even some of the the regional villages he painted were just amazing. Uh, you know, just the light. Yeah, and, for sure. And he could paint and he could paint green. I mean <laughs> <laughs> one of the toughest colors in the world to be doing painting is painting with green. Yeah. And it's uh it's one of those things. But yeah, this is a you know lovely, lovely painting in this one. How big is this one? It's fairly large, probably um, maybe 36 by 36, 40 by 40, I think. On a square, square format, yeah. 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 Uh, this is fairly large, too, also. I think it's uh, four the, feet by three feet. The infamous cardinal, <laughs> red cardinal. There is a wisteria in our backyard that uh, I exaggerated it. It's a lot, not quite as dense as that but um I, I i like the quagmire of of tree though there's a there is yeah. a textural linear texture as a background um that rather than just a bird on a tree on a branch this one is in a a branch tree that's been stripped back in the winter time of its leaves <laughs> but but it's kind of and I, I just there's a nice that punch of red it just yeah pops here and yeah no it's so this one is inspired by one from your backyard? Well, yeah, it was also painted for, uh, there was a project during COVID uh, where, uh, um, I guess, Skeleton Park Art Festival sponsored uh, art in people's houses. So this, this was in my front window okay. for about six months, I guess, um, during COVID. So, um, yeah. 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 I, so did, did COVID impact you at all? Well, I didn't get it, but um, certainly uh, uh, pretty much impacted life for everybody. Uh, yeah, I kind of put everything on hold for about two and a half years, I think. Yeah, right, right. It felt like we were in detention. You know, we had a yeah. detention. We had to, couldn't go out, couldn't visit, couldn't drink coffee with somebody. And <clears throat> the social aspects of painting right. hindered that. a little bit. I think it kind of forced us to do the online zooming and, and interaction in a different way, which probably we're using now more than we ever would have if we hadn't been forced to do it. Right. But I think some of it feels like it's waning a little bit. People are back to socializing and having openings again and enjoying those so. uh, that times. I think this is sort of a COVID inspired image anyway, the, the lonely little bird in, in that. Yeah. Thicker. Definitely, yeah, he definitely is by himself. Uh, yeah. <laughs> not a lot, not a lot of red in there. He's definitely out of out of out of place. And another of my parrot paintings, uh, yeah, you know, sort of a looks like a burnt out American uh, Canadian woods. Uh, There's a bit of that going on right now this year. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> I think we just finished losing most of Jasper. That's um, horrible. Yeah, they've just decimated. The fires have just decimated everything there, and it's unbelievably hot and dry. Yeah, but you know, understanding global warming. I mean, is it tangible? Can you really touch? Say this is actually doing it because it's one of those things. We still breathe the air, but we don't really see the pollution and the, the factors that are in the air that we're breathing. Uh, the sun still comes up in the morning, but some days it goes through a hazy. You know, some days you would wonder if the sun comes up at all because it's so orange you can't see 
anything for the smoke. <clears throat> but yeah. as it progresses year after year and gets worse and worse, I think we, you know, you can't really ignore it. Um, well, the smoke, the smoke is following uh, the jet stream. Yeah. So we had fires one year in B in the West Coast and. New York City is getting the smoke that's coming down from Ontario and north of Ontario <clears throat> everywhere. So it's not just staying in the region. It moves, and we're getting things from the states as well that come up to Canada. So yeah, the whole globe is a little hot right now. Yeah, I call this painting Firebird because just because of the color of the red. But no. Yeah, well, I can see why. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I think, yeah, well, I, I think your work is is helping respond to some things it's subtle though unless you you know why is the parrot in that location and you start asking questions and once you start asking those questions you get your answer back right and i think it's important right. that <clears throat> so in other words if they walked into your show and didn't read a statement on something and they just looked at it they would it would they might not well, get it right it, they would say, why is that like that why is that like and if that's all they can ask that's fine that starts the questions and the rest is up to the gallerist to uh or whoever's there to help them out yeah yeah another yeah. these are i always we looked at this previously and i thought these like oreos <laughs> oreos yeah. in the sky but this is probably one of your more abstract pieces um and surreal pieces uh, right of your works, you know right. <clears throat> so what is this Black response spot. well i called it covid cloud i i guess uh, the idea of um uh some sort of uh polluting effect uh in a clear sky or a, okay so they they could actually also be the COVID virus flying around. Yeah, that's, that's what they are. Yeah, <laughs> they are. So, but yeah, so it's uh, and it's, the the sick paint. Um, the, the painting is like smooth, but the the black dots are. Um, I can see that they're they're a little three dimensional. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, you've got a, so, so did you use a, a a medium to do that with to to think? Uh, yeah, I think I used some sort of. Uh, um, thick, uh, a thickener, in the, yeah, in, yeah, yeah. They they make some gels. I think some of the right. gels for doing that painting. No, uh, this is um, a bunch of crows. Is that the crows in well, the tree? They, this happened in the fall. This fall, um, and and a tree like right beside my house uh, for about a month uh, in Kingston uh, at in the morning and at dusk, uh, this uh, crowd of crows would descend uh, <clears throat> on different trees and make a racket and uh, poop all over the uh, parked cars underneath and everything. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, so uh, yeah, it's from a photograph that I took out of the tree beside my house. Uh, yeah, and also a, a murder of crows is the term for a group of crows, right? It is. It is. Yeah. It's I, I, as, a, as an omen, but um, anyway, I, it, it's a uh, it's a really interesting image. Uh, yeah. For basically a two color painting, it's it's quite a dramatic. I'm not a real silhouette kind of painting guy, but I I love the um the context of what it is but also the um i guess there's a certain weight to the amount of the birds at the top of the tree yeah right and yeah. and then the linear aspect of the tree leading up to them just a nice design on that i, I really like this is one of the one of, one of my nice images well there he is Stephen. he's here he's i am back up. that was that was very cool i like it it's very vivid i like it i like the crows at the end so but i also yeah. like the parrots so go figure <laughs> so david here's a question we ask everybody What's it cost to buy one of your pieces of art? Okay, well, I range from um, maybe 2,500, uh, 2,000 uh, to the little ones are like a hundred bucks. Uh, the, okay. Yeah, yeah, so. There you go. Yeah. And it's Canadian, everybody. So a hundred dollar US, yeah. that yeah. in the US, that's like 
five dollars and twenty five hundred Canadian. He owes you money, so it's good. <laughs> so very nice. All right. So we'll have David's links below. So if anybody wants to buy anything from David, you can hit him up, and if not, reach out to the show, and we will put you in contact with David. And so. uh, David will be having an online show at Artists in Canada here shortly, and uh, some of his work will be there. Some of the work that's from his show will be uh, available as well. So uh, we'll be promoting and showing some of that work as well. Yeah. Were great. Well, it was great talking with you, Dave. Thanks very much for, for the opportunity of seeing your work. Um, keep it up. I think uh, yeah. you can't stop. You got to keep, get the message out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. Dave. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Don't forget yeah. to subscribe and like everybody. See you next Thursday. Cheers. All right. <laughs>